Brown Dwarf Star has that belt. But I've beaten her, and I've taken that belt right off her pretty little shoulders. And I'm gonna do it again. I beat him once, I will just beat him again, and we can end the argument once and for all. Hello, Mara. Hello, Michael. Here we are again. Just the two of us. Seems like ages ago it was you winning that belt and me coming on stage and stealing your thunder. But then, you know, I got my comeuppance because I got a belt and you came on stage and stole my thunder. So here we are now. There's no difference now between those two other times. I see no difference. Just the two of us here. No difference at all. Hmm. Touche. Well, Mara, you know, I got to say something here. You came back after a long hiatus. We didn't know what was going to happen with you. We didn't know how you were going to play. And I have to say, I was impressed. Because I, I have the highest respect for a player that comes back and plays the way that you did. Not only because of that, but because you defeated the Wet Weasel. I didn't have to get my hands sullied by dealing with that little Wet Weasel. So you took care of that. So thank you. So now we're on to a new page. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a little fun, you and I. We get that belt back. We got a little match coming up. The fans, hey, the fans are going to get a match that they've been craving. And I'm going to get my belt back. Mm -hmm. Got anything to say about that? Cravings. Mm -hmm. You and I are so in sync right now. Yeah. Did you get the brownies and the cookies that I sent? Because I sense a chocolate craving in your future. What kind of question is that? Everybody loves it chocolate. Like the brownies you sent me. Come on, these are my these are my victory brownies for when I win a match, and I've got my victory cookies. Of course, I've got. I don't want to, but let's not talk about this. This is for another time. We're talking about the match. I know I got to say something here. You came back, and you are playing at a whole new level, and I love that because it's a whole new IG league. Tons of new slices. You got me playing at a whole new level. You, you saw my match against Damon, huh? Got anything to say about you that? Really elevated your gameplay a hundred percent. I did. Elevation is a tenant of baking. I am going to try an entirely new sponge. I'm making an ice cream cake, a Lotus Biscoff buttercream cake. We're gonna, it's gonna be eight layers. It's gonna be incredible. Eight, and I will post pics on Insta. Eight, eight layers? Why are you, it's just you and Dan. What are you cooking an eight layer cake? I'm not talking, stop. You're getting off the subject here. We gotta talk about the new slices here. I wanna know how you're doing with these things. How about Transformers, Alien versus Predator, Dystopian Future, Graphic Novel, Animated. You know, how about Ninja Turtles, huh? I know you're a little bit younger than me, so we've got the two different generations of Turtles fans, but how's your Ninja Turtle knowledge, huh? Ninja Turtle slices are my favorite kinds of slices. Ooh. I have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pizza cookbook with so many slices, the Caprese pizza, just amazing. Caprese pizza. Not the slices on a pizza, Mara. The damn slices on a damn wheel. Okay, this isn't going anywhere. This is not- Wheels. What? I have a pizza wheel. The thingy that, the big thingy that cuts the pizza. I have one of those. No! Okay, enough of this talk. You know what? You want to talk about baking? You want to talk about brownies? Get in the kitchen and start baking some stuff because you can send me a nice care package when you send that damn belt back my way. How's that sound, Mara? Give me the damn belt. That's what I want with the care package. And then you could put whatever cookies you want in there. Sound good? Care packages? Absolutely. 100% yeah. Mike. I will make sure I send enough cookies and brownies for Shannon. What? But I make no other promises. Well, that's very nice of you. I yeah. So, I, I yeah. So, you're going to send me the... I what? think we're done. We are? I think we're I think we're done. Yeah. Yeah, we're done. We we're, we're done. We did it. Oh. Go away. I'm Okay, I'm going to go. Okay. Nice talking to you. Wait, a, just a damn second here. Nobody tells me to go anywhere in my own damn house. Who do you think you are, Mara? Wait, Mara? No. I'm going to leave, but it's because I want to leave. You understand me? Not because you told me I'm going to leave. Shannon! Shannon! Mark told me to leave in my own damn house! Ladies and gentlemen.
gentlemen, and welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. Alongside Andrew Guy, I am merely Mark Baby Carrots Ellis, and what a thrill it is, Andrew, to be back in the world of shires and galaxies and enterprises. It is inner geekdom, and today we have a couple competitors that maybe their record is misleading as far as experience as far as talent and today one of them is going to further their own career in a big way yeah i mean both these guys have already made a career for both of themselves as reactors right we got greg alba on one side one of the greatest trailer reactors of all time and then taylor robinson on the other one of the greatest schmodown reactors of all time so we've got greg who's been in the league for a very long time taylor who's been a student of the game since day one and both of them battling out in ig which is pretty new territory for both of these guys yeah, haven't seen Taylor Robinson uh, compete proper in, in a little bit, but with Greg Alba, he sports a one and one inner geekdom record, but that doesn't really tell the tale as to how well both him and his real rejects buddy John Humphrey have played of late. You look at last season and Greg Alba, he made Mike Kalinowski have to hit a five pointer to win. When you push Kalinowski to the limit in inner geekdom, you're doing something right. Well, what's crazy about Greg and John is that they've kind of like slipped under the radar being geniuses of movie trivia, right? I mean, Real Rejects has been a team that's been in the league for so long that they honestly are, it's more about entertainment, right? How could it not be when they're on stage? They're like the wild berries. Yes, you're gonna answer some good questions here and there, but like, we just wanna watch you two exist together. But what we also found out with John in the free for all and Greg against Mike is these guys know a lot about movies. Apparently, a lot of folks like watching the two of us exist together. So let's talk about Taylor Robinson, though, because sometimes the most dangerous type of competitor is one that it's impossible to prepare for. She's such an enigma as far as her breadth of knowledge in inner geekdom. We've seen her compete at a high level before in the Schmodown. She obviously knows the game in and out. But what do you expect to see from her in today's matchup? I expect to see a completely different competitor than what we saw three years ago back in 2018. She had a good performance in that five way. She really did. She came down to the wire between her and Havon, but I actually feel like that we didn't get quite the tailor that we're going to see today. I think she's going to be a lot more confident, a lot more comfortable in her own skin. And I think honestly, her movie trivia that we saw back in 2018 isn't even going to shine a light to what we're going to see today. Well, what we're about to see right now is how we got here. And for that, we turn it over to the excellent Nerd Chronic with another Dynamite promo. Let's take a look. Look who it is. It's Taylor Robinson. Word has it she might be on the Schmodown soon. I like the DC animated movies. You seen any of those? I have. I like them as well. Ah, you know what you should play in the inner geekdom? <gasps> We also have Taylor Robinson, who was a reactor. With late to the party, you're familiar with. I'm the very familiar with late to the party. Will Taylor Robinson be the next reactor to say, "Oh yeah, look out for us"? Absolutely, back. If I get asked to come back, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to take everyone on. You thought you were done with me? Oh no, I'm back. Yeah, it's it's been quite a while. Coming back into the league about three years later, things have changed quite a bit. All season and all throughout the draft, everyone's been talking about the Finstock Exchange drafting rookies. Somehow, everyone's forgetting about me. Underestimating Taylor will be the biggest mistake they make this season, and I really firmly believe that. There's a Schmodown match today. I'm in the Schmodown. Greg Alba, some thought he played his way into this tournament. Some thought it would be the Warfather, while well, Greg Alba said, nope. And not only did he say nope, he did it commanding with a knockout. I guess I'm, I'm happy to be back in. I just started relaxing. I'm, I'm going to be an inner geekdom again. I know how the game works. Everyone seems to be underestimating just how much time and effort I've put in to studying. Nobody else thought I was important enough to reach out to me for this draft, so. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the facts. See, They're that's what ready. I like to hear. They're not ready. Yeah. They're the only faction that believes in me that thought I had potential to be a different player than I was three years ago. They're going to reap the benefits of everyone else overlooking what I'm about to do. I mean, Taylor, yeah, she's fine. I mean, she's been on the channel before. She might need to win this more than I do. Dude, I mean, I'm, I'm impressed. You got to be feeling good about that coming into your only second inner geekdom 
whenever you forced a two-time champion to his uh, five-pointer. Even if I don't win, I was like, I just want to prove that I can I can play if I take it seriously. Because I know if I apply myself to something, I can get good at it. Even if I don't win, I was like, I just want to prove that I can I can play if I take it seriously. Because if I know if I apply myself to something, I can get good at it. Uh, if I have time, I'm really busy. If I have time to study, I'll study. It's another moment to me that kind of feels full circle coming back into the league that my first match back would be against Greg. I am a phoenix rising from the ashes, ready to light this entire league on fire. Get ready. All right, well, you see that, and it, look, we know one of the managers is going to be here, okay? <laughs> Quirky Mercs, and yes. what Coy Jander has been able to do, he's taken Greg Alba, and he's been able to mold him into a competitor, but not lose the spirit, not lose the sense of humor that we've all come to know and love about Greg. And so that really is the genius of Coy Jander and his Quirky Mercs mentorship. Now, on the other end of the spectrum entirely, you have the Finstock Exchange, which we give them credit for yeah. drafting a lot of young <laughs> talent in this past season's draft but with him working with Taylor Robinson is there any chance that he's actually been able to mold her game and improve upon it well okay so here's the thing both these factions are doing really really well right now so as much as you want to maybe hate on Gucci the guy has figured it out for season after season after season I mean he was the guy that took the Patriots the distance and defended over and over and over and I gotta say I like what he does with his competitors the same that Koi does it's almost as if he knows how to coach his individuals in the exact way that they need now Koi's might come with some great knowledge and some training regimens whereas Gucci's might just come with some gibberish but it does seem to work out for Gucci and his players so I figure that him and Taylor have some secret language that they'll be speaking to each other today it seems to work out for Gucci and his players. As far as Gucci and technology, I don't know if he knows how to hold a phone or use a microphone or any of that stuff, but uh, I'm sure it's going to be some sort of adventure with him today. And now for the introductions of the competitors to the movie Trivia Schmodown Inner Geekdom, we turn it over to our own Christian George Harloff at your ready, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Movie Trivia Schmodown! Introducing first, representing the Finstock Exchange, with a record of zero wins and one defeat in the Inner Geekdom Division. She is Taylor Made Robinson. Hi, everybody. And there is Taylor Robinson, and hello to you. You certainly seem decked out and ready to compete in a geek heavy set of categories like what you're going to face today you heard andrew and i talking up top about how we've missed you in the league it, it's good to see you competing in a match again how are you feeling and and how is that different from how you were feeling when you were going into that jared haven match a couple of years ago i'm feeling extremely confident today the work that the exchange and i have done together has been so much we've we've really really put in a lot of time um and and i just know that that I'm extremely ready for this. I know that everyone has been underestimating me. The exchange was the only one that wanted to draft me, and now I'm here to prove that they were right. So Taylor, since the exchange has drafted you and it's been so long since you've been in the ring, in the arena, on the desk, what's changed with you personally from 2018 to today? And why should we be expecting a much more dominant performance? Honestly, I just have a lot more confidence. Uh, three years is a, is a long time for anyone to accomplish anything that they'd like to accomplish. And I just believe in myself a lot more. Uh, I definitely have a wider breadth of knowledge. And, and I'm just, I'm ready to show that three years is a long time. You can accomplish a lot when, when you decide you're gonna do something. Uh, Taylor, can't let you get out of here before we ask you. Um, your manager is somewhat of a riddle in amongst himself. Uh, has he lent any sort of guidance as far as how to prepare for a Greg Alba? 
He has. He he is very. He has a lot of knowledge. I know that. I know that everyone likes to likes to brush him aside. Likes to say that he's not really a great manager. He doesn't know what he's doing. But we've we've had a lot of talks, and and he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows that this is the perfect competitor for me, and and we've worked a lot on exactly what my strengths needed to be to to come away with this win. All right, it's a confident Taylor Robinson up top, and so yeah. with that, we will now meet her opponent. And her opponent, representing the Quirky Mercs, with a record of one win, one defeat in the Inner Geekdom Division. He is Greg Idris Elba. <laughs> there is Greg Idris Elba. Greg, first of all, how are you? Do you feel ready to compete in a movie trivia match, or is there other things that are on your mind? Uh, I got my second vaccine shot today. Congratulations! <laughs> and uh, I, I feel, I feel hopeful. For Taylor, I think Taylor's got this. I, I mean, I heard her speech there, and I'm gonna do my best. You know, like I, I was hearing that, I'm like that's inspiring. I thought she'd have more of like a, like a real mean attitude today. I'm like, you know what, Taylor, you go out there and you rock it today, man. <laughs> I'm excited for her. I'll do my best, but she's got. I, I, I feel like I'm gonna. I don't know what I'm gonna do. We'll just see what happens. Let's see if I uh, remember anything at all. Or you know, maybe Greg, I'll maybe I'll just surprise everyone and just get a perfect score. But I have I have faith in Taylor. That's my you know, new angle today. That's my new game. Greg, you might have people fooled with this nice guy. I don't know a whole lot. We'll see what happens. Routine, but I got to tell a, you, man, I'm a narcissistic human being in real life. <laughs> I, you should be because you took KO <laughs> to the final question. To the final question, I got to ask you. That's not an easy thing to do at all by any means. Do you think that people underestimate you? And do you think that you have a chance to hold that belt this year, brother? I think people estimate me at just the right limit. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I was like, you know, I people, Taylor saying like people are underestimating her. I'm like, dang, you know, I think I underestimated her. I should have studied <laughs> going into this match. <laughs> she's, she's had three years to study. That's a good point, Taylor. But... I'm going to watch my – I'll start coming. Once I got Koi talking in my ear, look, John got six points last match. If I can get seven, I've done my job because I'm always in that guy's shadow no matter how well I do. So if I can just get more than six, I'm A-OK. -okay. All right. Well, A-OK -okay has a lot of different meanings, and congratulations on your impending health benefits. So was with that good that, smack talk? That was good smack talk, right? That was great. You, you really were striking fear in the heart of your opponent. Or Take that, at least Taylor. Maybe the rest of the quirky mercs as to your well-being. <laughs> so. Hello, Schmodown faithful. Welcome back. And we welcome back HelloFresh. What is HelloFresh? You don't know what HelloFresh is? With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. You skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy and it's affordable that's the best part that's why we tell you about it it is super affordable and that's why it is america's number one meal kit you can try meals ready in 20 minutes or less lightning prep recipes and quick breakfast and lunch is perfect for your busy schedule HelloFresh has a wide variety of easy delicious options for all three meals a day plus every snack and a special treat in between I'm excited to have HelloFresh back in my life, and my wife is as well. We like to cook together. I like to grill. Always excited to see the healthy, fresh ingredients that are coming in. The, the meats are amazing. I'm a big chicken guy. I love their chicken. So in order to take advantage of this deal here, you go to HelloFresh.com slash MTS12, and you use code MTS12. Why 12? Well, you get 12 free meals, including free shipping. One more time. HelloFresh.com slash MTS12. Use that code MTS12 and you get 12 free meals, including free shipping. That's a deal and it's worth checking out. So make sure you check it out. It's very, very important to use that HelloFresh.com slash MTS12. Please, please, please do it. And do not forget HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. 
All right, the competitors have been set, and now it's time for the rules of round number one. Uh, Greg, you know the rules, and so if you need to take a quick cat nap, feel free. In round number one, 10. Yes, it is Inner Geekdom. <laughs> 10 questions from 10 different corners of Inner Geekdom know how each question's worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing, at least not in round number one. As soon as competitors hear the question, Asked by myself or Andrew, you have 15 seconds to get that correct answer onto whatever writing surface you prefer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera. At the same time, you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. Each competitor has three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds, utilize the JTE rule. You also each have one challenge. You may use at any point throughout the three round match. You may initiate the challenge and we'll bring in your managers and they will confer and ratify that said challenge is taking place. Okay, so Andrew, they're set, they're ready to rock here. And do you have any questions for our competitors? No, I'm ready, Mark, are you ready? I am ready. Taylor, are you ready? I'm ready. And Greg Alba, are you ready? Yeah, Taylor's ready, let's go. Let's hear it, Andrew. Then let's get ready to Schmodown. That is how you'll learn how to announce on the fly. Well done, sir. Asking the first question of the match in the category of Marvel movies will be the Marvel. sultry, smooth tones of Mr. Andrew Guy. Ellis just said it for you guys. Your first question comes from the category of Marvel, Marvel films. Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck directed which 2019 film in the MCU? Oh my God, I think I know this. It's a big difference between the size of the board. Will that be a factor in the match? It always is, Mark. It's always a factor in the match. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, let's go to Alba first. Captain Marvel. Get it closer to the camera. There you go. That is Captain Marvel. Okay, and Taylor. Captain Marvel. And that is Taylor. correct. As well. All right. <laughs> we move on to dystopian future and time travel. That's and how it feels right now. For another point, in which Terminator film will you hear John Connor say, "You're nothing but a relic from a deleted timeline"? Wow, Burn City there, Andrew. What an insult. Yeah, I, if your last name was Connor, would you name your kid John at this point, or is it just a problem? Without a doubt. Five, four, three. There's no other name. Two, no. one. Pens down. Going to Taylor first. Taylor, did you have it? Terminator Salvation. That is incorrect. Does Greg Alba have it? I said Terminator Genesis. Terminator Jenny Smith is the correct answer, and Alba and his gigantic whiteboard take a one-point lead over Sheridan early as we pivot to Category 3. It is a gigantic whiteboard, but still hard to read somehow. Who knew? I'm so sorry. This question is going terribly. <laughs> number three. <laughs> question number three in the category of Transformers. Oh, my Today, favorite. How many films in the Transformers franchise has John Turturro appeared as the character of Seymour Simmons? Oh mm. boy, that's a great question, you know? Notorious line, criminals are hot, comes from this wonderful franchise. <laughs> I know you can quote it. <laughs> Five, four, three. I'm not gonna call it a talent, but it's something too. <laughs> One, pens down and Greg Abo, let's see that board again. Tie the game, Taylor, I said three. That is, that is incorrect. It's incorrect. Four, isn't it? Taylor have it. Freaking four. I said four. It's four. She does. All Damn tied it. up here at two. Alba, looking at the future. That's right. And we have uh, no concern for a bonus round, although both competitors still adjudicating themselves wealth early. We go to Alien and Predator, category featuring Alien and Predator. Your question. Bill Paxton, Ruben Blades, and Gary Busey all have supporting performances in what 1990 film? And you just got to wonder, Andrew, Christian Harloff has his finger on the button. You know he wants to pop in with his Gary Busey impression. Do you, Andrew Guy, do a good Gary Busey? It's always a lot of teeth. Four. But no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. Let's go to Taylor first and see if she had it. Predator 2. 
That is correct. And we go on to Greg Alba. Taylor, I said Predator 2 as well. Look at that. Okay. You know, I got like eight different color markers here. Do you need me to change it up? I feel like that would help. Hey, man, you do whatever you need to do to keep scoring. You're doing great. And we are tied at three. Tied at three as we go into question number five. Hot question game. number five in the category of Spider Man. <laughs> Spider Man. Marvel's famous webhead made his big screen. Wow. Marvel's famous webhead made his big screen debut in May of what year under the direction of Sam Raimi? All right, so if you were to be like the bully in a Spider-Man movie, what would you call him? Would you would you go with Webhead? Call him an eight-legged freak. <laughs> Repeat the question. Yeah. Okay, bad. you got it in just in time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, question number five in the category of Spider-Man. This is your first JTE, Greg. Marvel's famous Webhead made his big screen debut in May of what year? under the direction of Sam Raimi. All right, as we count down, Andrew Guy has 10 seconds to come up with a better insult for Spider-Man. Can he do it? Uh, 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 your uncle Five, died. Wait, that's four, not Four, three, two, going right for the heart. One, pens down, let's go to Mr. Alba. I know I'm right around the ballpark, I don't have 2002. That is you correct. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Right off the bat, does Taylor have it? 2002. Oh, she didn't even question that No, one. she's cold-blooded right now. <laughs> Damn, Taylor. Right. Move on to Swashbuckling Adventure. And that's that's for, an inner geekdom now? It is, and it's a very fun word to say. The question, cool. who plays Henry Jones Sr., Indiana's father in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade? Who do you think's cooler in that family, Mark? Like, who do you think people are more excited to meet? Uh, I mean, if you're asking me personally, I would enjoy meeting any of them, but the dog is the answer. Five, four, three. Good answer. Two. It's always the answer. One. Tell Snickers I said hi. Taylor Robinson, you're up first. Sean Connery. Correct for a point does. Mr. Alba have it. Sean Connery. He certainly does. That's what the weird light tells me. That is correct. And Andrew, they are suddenly cooking after each one had an early goof. Five to five. Five to five. This is exactly what you want to see in Inner Geekdom. Your seventh question, ladies and gentlemen, comes in the category of animated. Oh, boy. What 2018 animated superhero film features the song My Superhero Movie? Mark, do you want to sing your favorite line from that song, or do you want to... You don't have to. I mean, you know I would. I, it, it might give away the answer. Is the only reason I'm declining your generous invitation. Five. Five. Three. Two. Repeat the question. Okay, using a JTE rule there, that's two. Yep. Your seventh question, Greg. Animated. I'm ready. What 2018 <laughs> animated superhero <laughs> film features the song My Superhero Movie? All right. And, uh, you know, it's okay. funny. I put down an answer to a movie I haven't seen, and I'm totally going with that one to see if it, that's the one. I, I think people should adopt uh, Greg Lebowski's lifestyle more often. <laughs> one, two, one, and let's go to you first, Greg. What do you got? I said Teen Titans go to the movies. That is correct. Yeah. Oh, no nice way. Right really? There. Oh, does, hell yeah. Does Robinson have it? That is not what I had. No. Okay, That's, so that was my first choice. That's why I was like, but I don't think I remember that. <laughs> Alba takes a unlikely six to five lead, although he's used J two JT rules to get there. I'll Alba use my third one having... before this round's over. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> there you are welcome to use them at your leisure. Your next category is question eight: Jurassic Park movies. And here we go. In the film Jurassic Park, which character says? Gee, the lack of humility before nature that's being displayed here uh, staggers me. You know, Which character or actor? Uh, you'd have to use a JT rule, unfortunately. You're kidding me! Opting not to. Five. Not <laughs> four, know, damn it. Three, two, <laughs> one. Hands and down, and let's go to Taylor first. See if she can set the standard. Ian Malcolm. That is correct. Does Greg have it? I mean, I said Malcolm. 
that we can accept yeah. Malcolm. Okay. And that is correct. And so it is still a one point lead for the real reject representing today, seven to six. Two questions left, Andrew. Yep. Our second to last question comes in the category of comic book movies. Ian McShane, Brian Gleason, and Daniel Day Kim appear in what 2019 comic book film from director Neil Marshall? You know, Mark, I had to Google that uh, Brian Gleason was a real human being earlier today. So that's something that I did. Uh, I have a friend, Brendan Gleason, and uh, not the actor, a different one. And he looks exactly like me. Four, five, three, two, one, and time. All right, let's go to Greg first. Did you have it? How, how boy, can you see it? Yes. Just well enough. <laughs> how about Taylor? How boy. Both correct. This is, is a really, really great first round, Mark. To seven, yeah. I mean, amongst all the shenanigans and Tom Fuller, we got two really, really talented inner geekdom players, and we move on to our last category in round one, and that is in the world of mixed bag. Let's reach our hand in there and see what comes out. For one point, the question, what 1990 time travel film features the line, it means your future hasn't been written yet? No one's has. Your future is whatever you make it. So make it a good one, both of you. And that's a pretty good life advice there, Andrew. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty easy to give life advice though when you can time travel, I feel. <laughs> it does give you a leg up. Yeah. Five, four, that marker's not three, working. two, one. Pens down and go to Taylor first. Did you have it? I did not have anything, no. And how about Greg? Trust me, it's, it's wrong. I'm not gonna say it. What is it? Wow. Yeah. Right? We were looking for the time travel movie that is the third in this time travel franchise. It's three. Back, back to the Future 3. To the Future. I, damn it. <laughs> I said Back to the Future 1. Darn it. That's 85 Not though. quite oh. close enough. For points. But after round number one, it is an eight to seven lead. Greg Alba narrowly leading Taylor Robinson as we veer into round number two known as the wheel round, the wheel of fate, doom, and justice. Each competitor is going to get a spin at the wheel. Once they settle on a category, five questions will emerge from said genre or realm. Each question is worth two points. No penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which we are told by people smarter than us is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question does recede to one. So it is Greg Alba, he of one JTE World Remainings decision. Would you like to spin the wheel first, Greg, or do you want to defer to your opponent? This is my call, or can I talk with Koi? Uh, you can talk with Koi after you make the decision. Wow, that's tricky. Yep. Uh, you know, Taylor's, Taylor's killing it, man. Let her go first, yeah. I'll watch. And bring in some more madness. For her manager, uh, 60 seconds, Gucci, to speak with your client. Well done. Very well done. Look, we're down one. Not a problem. Let's take a spin here and see what we get. All right. Stay calm. You're playing fantastic. Yep. Let's do it. I think he's in some sort of underground market. Yeah, trust me. The less you know about his whereabouts, the better is the rule of thumb. Here comes Taylor's spin. And opponent's choice is lurking on there. It doesn't seem like she's going to get it, though. She could get the world of Batman movies. Okay, so... 60 seconds on the clock. Taylor, would you like you to think. keep Batman or would you like to spin again? Um, I feel pretty good about Batman. Um, I mean, there are other things I can spin and Is there and something feel you want better on there? If there's something, yeah. if there, how, many, how many categories there do you feel better than Batman? Probably two. So, I mean, I don't mind taking Batman. Do you think Batman's right. the way to go? Need an answer here soon? Good at um, I, yeah, I, I feel like I, I can do I, I Batman. Spin again, Taylor. Okay, I'll all right, spin again. I'll spin again. All right. <clears throat> all right, she is going to elect to respin away from Batman. And Andrew, you just hope you don't fall into that opponent's choice pitfall at the risk. Yeah, it's always tough to spin away from something when you feel that you could do well in it, but it's IG, so you never know how deep those categories are going to go. Oh no, and it oh. is opponent's okay. choice. 
And we are here with Koi and Greg. Uh, Taylor did spin opponent's choice. So you gentlemen now have 60 seconds on the clock to determine what category you want to give her as her opponent. So we've got the ones we know she did kind of like. That obviously is negated. We've got ones that we feel comfortable in that would be good for our steals. I think we lean towards something that we can steal from that also isn't the thing she's dressed as. What are you in Clenine for? <laughs> What's she dressed as? She's got some some Harry Potter situations going on. That wasn't Predator. Okay. All right. No, so not let's this time. go with uh I mean I don't know if she missed the animated question, the dystopian future time travel question. Yes. I feel like I might be able to get some dystopian future time travel stuff. I was leaning toward either something super broad like comic book 20 seconds. or one of those two. So if you feel like you can steal from Dystopian, I love that instinct. I feel like our strengths, her weakness is the way to go. How many seconds have we got? 10, Ten. seconds. I love you, Koi. I, I want to use too. this time to tell you Very that important. you are my favorite person in the world. And Look I'm at us just hanging here. out like this. And that's yeah. time. This is time. Future time. time travel. Let's go with that one. <laughs> this isn't a dystopia of my heart. <laughs> Let's go dystopian future Thank travel. you, gentlemen. All right, so Taylor, you did spin opponent's choice, and the gentlemen on the other side of the ledger for the Quirky Mercs have elected to give you dystopian future time travel in there, all sorts of good stuff. But your five questions will be administered by Andrew Guy, each one worth two points, unless you need multiple choice. Andrew, whenever you are ready, sir. I am ready, Taylor. Looks ready. So here we go. In dystopian future and time travel, your first question. Taylor. Greg, let's make sure we can see your hands, too, for the duration of the questioning. <laughs> too high? Good. Perfect. Good. Which actress <laughs> plays Maggie McFly in Back to the Future 3? Multiple choice. Multiple choice. Your options are A, Claudia Wells, B, Leah Thompson, C, Elizabeth Shue, or D, Darlene Vogel. B, Leah Thompson. That is correct for nice one work. point. And we are tied. All tied up. Your second question, Taylor, the category of dystopian future and time travel is which actor plays Nux in Mad Max Fury Road? Multiple choice. Checking to multiple choice here. Is it A, Josh Hellman, B, Nathan Jones, C, Hugh Keys Byrne, or D, Nicholas Holt? D, Nicholas Holt. Give her another point. There we go, adding them up. Now taking that lead by one, coming into your third question here, Taylor, in dystopian future and time travel. In which Terminator film does Sarah Connor say, I'm wanted in a couple of states? 50, actually. Terminator Dark Fate. She doesn't check to multiple choice and she earns two points for it. There we go, taking a nice lead here. I did a great so, job choosing this one. 11 to eight, <laughs> and uh, she got the thumbs up from her playing opponent. <laughs> I was just going to say, some nice encouragement there from her opponent. All right, Taylor, your next question. In Mad Max Fury Road, the oh, car Furiosa is leading is supposed to go where before she takes them off course? Multiple choice. Is it A, Aquacola, B, e, The Bullet Farm, C, Gastown, or D, the Citadel. Can you repeat the options, please? Yep, you can do that once for free with no usage of a JT rule. Go ahead, Andrew. Is it A, Aquacola, B, The Bullet Farm, C, Gas Town, or D, The Citadel? And Alba, if we could have you keep your hands up, brother. I'm just taking some acetaphetamines. <laughs> the uh, Tylenol. <laughs> C, as in cat. C as in cat for Gastown is correct, Taylor. Up to Dude, 12 to that's eight impressive. Now. That's impressive. Eight. Way to go. And can I take one of these now? Y yes, you may. Yes, Thank you may. You as can. long Just as you keep drag. cheering on Taylor. <laughs> try to be try to relax and try to be silent during her actual thinking time for so the sorry. question. Thanks. I mean, you killed it, Taylor. That was awesome. And your encouragement your... always welcome. Final question in the category of dystopian future 
and time travel. Who plays the character Persephone in The Matrix Reloaded? Multiple choice. She checks the multiple choice here. Is it A, Monica Bellucci, B, Nona Gay, C, Essie Davis, or D, Jada Pinkett Smith? D as in dog. That is incorrect. Greg, I'm going to give you your options for a steal here. We'll re-ask the question as well. Oh, just okay. Yep. And, do I, and do I need question. it? I'm so nervous. Uh, yeah, just, you know, I need some practice here. I don't know if you know this, but I'm still getting used to this. So. I'm just taking so long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Who plays the character Persephone in The Matrix Reloaded? Is it A, Monica Bellucci, B, Nona Gay, C, Essie Davis, or D, Jada Pinkett Smith? It's Monica Bellucci. For the one point steal, it is Monica Bellucci. That leaves us with Taylor Robinson at 12 points after her round two. And Greg only down by three at nine here after an opponent's choice, Mark. That's right. A lot of interesting sound effects and jocularity during that round. But what it equals is Taylor Robinson had a really good maneuvering of a tough category that obviously her opponent saddled her with. It's just that last steal at the end was huge. And so now instead of possibly a five point lead for Robinson, it's only a three point lead. But Greg Alba still has a spin at that wheel. And so we'll see what his fate tells him. And now here for 60 seconds of consultation is the Quirky Mercs manager, Koi Jandrew. 60 seconds on the clock, begin. I messed up, Koi. No. Why do that, man? She dropped down do every time. Koi? It was great. Damn. We got one pointers instead of two. The way I see it is right now you're practically at 19 because you're about to get two pointers all the way through these fives. You know really? that guy at the gym that looks like he doesn't work out that then lifts more than everyone else? That's you right now. You're the guy That's Mark Ellis throwing right up <laughs> lots and lots of plates, and then the shredded dude is putting up just like 35s. So you're embarrassing. Yeah. It's going to be great. I said today all I want to do is hang out with you. You got my text. We talked earlier. All I wanted was this. Right now, go into this, get some points or not. You already beat John. Uh, frankly, you're crushing. I already beat John. <laughs> you're remembering stuff that like you don't even think you know. So get a category that we talked about. We talked about our pros. We talked about our cons. We've got control of the board. It's ours to win. You're at 19 points right now in my mind. Let's get the yeah. board to look like our mind. All right. About Thanks for prepping seconds. me for the wheel. I appreciate that. Let's do this. This is where all my skill comes in. And you still got a JTE, and those were really well used, by the way. Those were incredibly used because you got points with both of them, and I'm just, I'm proud. Dude, I appreciate that so much, Koi. Let's get a thing we want, and let's get some points we got. Oh, It is very narrowly avoiding opponent's <sighs> choice. More than meets the eye, Transformers. <laughs> Greg, Koi, 60 seconds to make the decision. Well, we know what we don't want, and we know what we do, and we were very close to something we don't want, but I think we should spin again. How do you feel? You know, Koi, I saw that thing that Gucci and Robinson did where she had a thought, and then he had a thought, and then they didn't agree to it, and I was like, what the hell is that all about? Yep. I'm going to follow your lead, man. We're going to agree that there is more to Greg than meets the eye, but Transformers is not for us. Let's spin it again. Yeah, let's spin it again. Okay. Even though I love Transformers. I mean, cinema has never been a more prevalent <laughs> shining light than the Transformers saga. I mean, if I get Spinner's Choice, I'm picking Transformers either I, way. I, this is just for fun, really. We just want to hang out longer. He didn't get too far from Spinner's Choice. He does land on comic book movies. So oh, that will man. Be this always seems like category. something All right. Great. Taylor is back. And Greg has spun... Comic book movies, too bad he didn't spin Spinner's Choice so he could go back and select Transformers. <laughs> Heartbreak, left and right. Okay, Greg, so you're going to have five questions. Again, any question you missed, Taylor Robinson will have the opportunity to steal. Are you ready to get going here in round number two? I am so ready. All right, these are movies based on talking picture books. And the question, mm -hmm. who plays Victoria Winslow in Red and red two. I want to say Helen Mirren. Is that a final answer? Sure, why not Helen Mirren? It's a good one because it's correct for two points and just like that, it is a one point lead for Robinson and Alba can take the lead here with a correct answer off the bat of this query. 
Who plays the character Carr, a new scroll keeper in Bulletproof Monk? Chow Yun Fat? That is incorrect. Oh, so damn it. Oh, we oh, it. Back to three. We go over to Taylor. Taylor, the question again for two points. Who plays the character Carr, a new scroll keeper in Bulletproof Monk? Five, four, three, two. No, I don't have one. anything. It's Sean William Scott, isn't it? It is Sean William Damn Scott. It. And unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. no points for that knowledge now, but still impressive nonetheless. It remains 12 to 11. And once again, Alba, with his third question, has the chance to take the lead here. Greg, which comedic actress stars as the character Kathy Brennan in the film The Kitchen? Melissa McCarthy. Yes. Two points yeah. for Greg Alba, and it is now 13 to 12. It's a one point lead for Alba, and he's still got two questions remaining, Andrew. Yeah. yeah, it could be a massive five point lead going into this, but that's still easily, easily surmountable in round three. And your penultimate question in the category of comic book movies in the film Ghost World. Enid is forced to take a remedial class for what subject during summer school to actually graduate high school? Multiple choice. For one point, your options are, is it A, art, B, history, C, biology, or D, economics? History. Is incorrect. And so for the possible tie, Taylor, I'm going to give you the question and the options again. In the film Ghost World, Enid is forced to take a remedial class for what subject during summer school to actually graduate high school? Is it A, art, B, history, C, biology, or D, economics? Five, four, Art. Three, two, art. The class sister Gabriel taught me in high school is correct for a point, and we are oh, tied man. going into what the last a, question around number two. What a game! <laughs> That's my job, Greg. What a game, man! <laughs> hands up. All right, your hands are up, and you appear ready to field your final question in round two in the category of comic book movies, Greg. Which actor stars as hitman Duncan Vizsla? in the 2019 film, Polar. Mads Mikkelsen. And he is very good at crying blood as well. That is correct. And so after all of that, it was a back and forth round number two for virtually each and every question there, Andrew. But we do have a 15 to 13 lead in favor of the real reject Greg Alba going into round number three. I mean, it's incredible when you look at the fact that Taylor spun opponent's choice. She was down points coming into round mm -hmm. number two and that we're only separated by Two points. This is exactly what we're looking for in round three of IG. Greg's got still a lot to do here. That's right. A lot of work for both competitors. And I'm being told I've only called Taylor Taylor Sheridan once. And so that's a win for me. <laughs> I've not called her David Robinson yet. So that's another win. And here now are the rules for round number three. Each competitor is going to face three questions. These questions are asked to you and only you. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number three. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one is worth three points. Your final question, should we make it that far, is worth five gigantic points. And now, to get those questions, we actually need to rely on our competitors to give us a series of numbers. These numbers may range from one to 16. You each pick three numbers. You may not pick the same integers as your opponent because each one of those numerals corresponds to a unique category of inner geekdom knowledge. All right, and so as Taylor prepares and Greg stretches, Greg, you have the option, because you have a two-point lead, to give us your three lucky numbers first. From one to 16, what feels the nerdiest? Five, seven, nine. Oh, five, seven, nine it is. And now we go to Miss Robinson. Taylor, same question. From one to 16, what feels lucky? One, five, and 12. 
Like I said. Uh, can't pick five again. I'm oh, sorry. Um, one. One, two, and twelve. <laughs> one, two, and twelve is. And we welcome in the always reliable internet and camera of Koi Jander. 60 <laughs> seconds for you and your competitor starting now. You're at twice the points you wanted to get. You're playing like the geekdom champion that I drafted. This is how you beat Kalinowski this year. I'm just, I'm proud of you, man. And we're hanging out. How you doing? That's true. But I miss Sean Williams, Scott. That really bugged me. So what I recommend is this next round, you have one JTE left and take an extra beat in your mind to just like digest. Like if you hear it, you have an instinct, just play over the question and the answer in your head. So I want you to repeat the sentence that you heard, repeat your answer and then say it as long as you have time. So just pace yourself just that one beat longer because you knew three of those a second late. Just digest. Don't take too long and you true. got one JTE <laughs> left. Okay. I 15 love seconds. You're the best. Oh, we got 15 seconds? Yeah. So how's, how's your day otherwise? Uh, pretty good, no. you know. It's like I'm getting a vaccine shot in four hours of sleep. I'm feeling good right now, you know. Imagine <laughs> how you're gonna have a good time. With full sleep. All right, and Taylor's that's killing that's it. Taylor's doing up. great, man. She's Thank playing you. like an unvaccinated champion. It's the microchip you got from Bill Gates, chip. right? The microchip. Don't let that's them hang us up. And now uh, Taylor, with her own series of struggles, gets to talk to her manager Gucci. Sixty seconds starting now. Look, great job. Way to way to go through that. That was a rough, rough uh, category. Fantastic. You have three JT rules left, so you're going to be fine with that as well. Just take your time on these answers. Like yep. I said, two points isn't insurmountable. Yep. Uh, he's going to miss his five anyway, so it doesn't make a difference. Get Let's get him to his five. Yep. That's all that matters. We got when this. that happens, we'll be celebrating in the, in the winter circle like where we usually are. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So let's do it. Get it. Take your time. And remember, JT rules. Always give an answer. Yeah. Even if you don't think it's right, just do it. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Knock them out. Let's get it. All right, the competitors are back. And I, I don't know, can we give points to the Finstock Exchange for actually being professional? For That was a really nice talk there from Tom. So thank you, Tom. Yeah, I was a little surprised, but I think he gave really great advice. I actually think both the managers gave phenomenal advice to their competitors coming into this round. And now serious. Andrew and I have to recover from that shock <laughs> and start asking some questions. And so uh, the first question will go to... Taylor Robinson, Andrew Taylor selected category number one for her That's two right. pointer, and this could potentially tie the match. What category is it? <clears throat> Taylor, to tie the match for two points, your category is going to be swashbuckling adventure. And I'm really happy now that we both got to say swashbuckling on the broadcast. So, Taylor, Fun. for two points, it is. And to tie the game, which Indiana Jones film opens in a club known as Club Obi Wan? Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. That is correct. All tied up here at 15. And Alba just letting us know that you got it right as well. That's right. Alba giving the thumbs up. Maybe because she just avoided a TKO with that correct answer. And now Alba excited to field some questions. It would appear, Greg, you selected category five for your two-point question. And it's one that you liked on the wheel, but you decided to spin away from the oh, transformer. <laughs> are back in your, if you tease them with liking them, they are gonna come back to bite you. Here we oh, go. No. For nine. two points and <laughs> a two point lead over Robinson in the category of Transformers. Okay. What Transformers film has the tagline, beyond good, beyond evil, beyond your wildest imagination? Five, four, three. Transformers, Two. Revenge of the Fallen. I don't know. It's incorrect. And the answer, it was the Transformers, the movie released oh, no in the way. 1980s. <laughs> and oh, wow. so now, Andrew, it is oh, a tie yeah. bargain. We are going to go back to Robinson for her three-pointer first as Greg did enter the round with the lead. And Taylor, you selected the number two for your three-point question, and that number coincides to the category of Superman. Hmm. Superman. So you spun away from Batman. Here we are with Superman for three points in Batman v Superman. Which character says, nobody cares about Clark Kent taking on the Batman?
five. Lex oh. Luthor? That is incorrect. That is incorrect. And as your opponent just said, we were looking for Perry White. Should have got that White. one. Damn. Perry White, the head newsman. And so now, going to go to Greg Alba for his three pointer. And Greg, you selected category number seven. And John Elway and Joe Theismann's number corresponds to Marvel movies. Okay. And the question. For three points to break the tie and get a three-point lead. Who plays Glenn Talbot, a ruthless and arrogant former soldier who has a history with Betty in 2003's Hulk? Josh Lucas. We have a new leader at the top, and it is Greg Alba by three. Andrew, it goes back to Robinson for a five-pointer. She's got to have. He didn't take his time, but he sure knew that answer. Taylor, you said number 12. Number 12, and that is in the category of fantasy sci-fi. Fantasy oh, sci-fi for you your five-pointer and to stay in the match. In Bloodshot, after Ray Garrison rescues the hostage... He flies home to what airbase in Italy? Five. Repeat the question. For five points in the category of fantasy sci-fi, in Bloodshot, after Ray Garrison rescues the hostage, he flies home to what airbase in Italy? Five, four, three, no, two, one. No, I don't have it. And your winner, ladies and gentlemen, Greg Idris Elba. We were looking for Aviano. You say bloodshot. <laughs> Fantasy There's sci-fi. Spidey Cat, and there is Koi celebrating with Greg Alba. An, Im- an <laughs> unlikely victory, if for no other reason, because Greg wasn't feeling all that hot, but he knocked it out of the park. <laughs> Thank you. Dude, all right, and now Greg <laughs> yes. realizes that he won, then we're going to drop them out and let them celebrate however they choose to. No judgment here. All right, so Andrew, you saw Spidey Cat getting into the act, and you saw Greg Alba looking a little (laughs) bewildered that he had actually won the match. Again, it was a very tough five-pointer for Robinson, who played well herself, but the headline is going to be Greg Alba wins. He was maybe not feeling 100%, but when it came to what's in between his ears, that was locked, loaded, and ready to go. I mean, there was a lot of really great stuff that we saw from both of these competitors today. And and obviously, Greg comes out with the win after going back and forth in that round two. I think that that was a bit of a misstep between Taylor and Gucci in their communication in round two. Maybe she would have been much happier. I mean, who isn't going to be happier with anything other than opponent's choice? But when you look at Greg in the game that he played, I mean, he had an incredible performance in round one. He did great in round number two. He knew her answer in round three, maybe not the five-pointer, but... The one thing I want to see from Greg is just to slow down a bit. Just like his manager said, man, he knew all those answers. He played so well. And if he's going to get that belt, which it sounds like Koi wants him to do by the end of the season, he's got to start playing the game like the best to play the game. He's just got to slow down a bit. That's right. And uh, maybe slow down, drink a few Pedialytes and get back to fighting, Wade. And with Greg, not shy about spending his JTE rules early and often. But hey, in the end, all that matters is who got the W. That would be Greg. Idris Alba here today. And now for an interview with the winner, Greg, and his manager, Koi, and likely Koi's cat, Spidey Cat, here is the great Jen Sturger. This is the first time we're talking to Jen after winning. <laughs> yeah. After winning all Look, these I wasn't years. I to point that out. Such I wasn't a different gonna point feeling. that out. <laughs> uh, how does it feel? Shit. How does it feel? It feels good, but damn, man, I, I honestly think this was Taylor's game. Like the whole, in all sincerity, I really feel like it was. Like she got opponent's choice. Granted, 
I did not know dystopian time travel and all that was actually a part of the inner geekdom this year. So I was like, oh, that's a neat category. It's but, always a good sign, by the way, when the competitors are like swashbuckling. That's that's part of inner geekdom. Yeah, this is Greg Lebowski, and I love that yes. new name because I was going to say the dude abides, Alba. But uh, yeah, sure. I'm that so works. impressed with the laissez-faire studying tactics of a man with a mild fever and body aches. I mean, well, I, I got I got very lucky, and uh, but seriously, like I would say, this was Taylor's game. Like she got opponent's choice. Those questions she got were that five pointer, man. I and I, like, I would have totally blanked. That <laughs> that you got me remember. nervous about getting a five-pointer because I was Josh like, wow. Josh Lucas in Hulk, though. That is a strong third point, like three-pointer. <laughs> I, mean, like, I didn't remember that. Yeah, it, was, it took me a while. Yeah, sorry. There was a lot of uh, excessive giggling in this match, but I got to uh, say, it was it was just so on brand for anyone <laughs> managed by Koi. Koi, you made the move to keep Alba. You got to be feeling really good about that choice to stick with your guy. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I want this is the first time we've got to hang out this year. This is the first time we're like in <laughs> April. I usually have seen Greg like 20 times by now. So this was fantastic. I knew I'm so confident in him, even when he's not, especially when he's not. Sometimes he needs to not think about it to know things. Sometimes thinking means the thoughts go away. So it really is a matter of adjusting his perspective. And then when I need him to think, just reshaping the way he goes into the game. Like the third round, he did adjust the way he was thinking. When we go into this next match, we're gonna talk about, you know, tactics and whatnot, because the information's all there. I have no doubt that the encyclopedia is up there. It's just whether the pages are stuck together from things that we don't talk about. Koi, gross. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> I was gonna say, by breaking it down just by sheer logic of what you just said, Koi said, thinking leads to thoughts, thoughts are bad. That's, 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 <laughs> Koi's, that's Koi's thought process when it comes to coaching you through this. But I mean, it feels like you've really found your division. I am, I'm fortunate. And going off of Koi's philosophical thought process here, uh, <laughs> what I wanted to harp on was I actually, yeah, I meditated before this. I wasn't feeling well. I was like, I gotta at least meditate as I really haven't, and I, I, it sounds weirder to say this, it's weird, when you win, this sounds like bragging, and then when you lose, it sounds like an excuse. I have had no time to study. Uh, it's been like 10 to 12 hour days for the Real Rejects channel and Patreon, so I've had like no time to study. And then when I meditated today, I was thinking about like, you just gotta let, allow it to come into your brain, and just allow it. So I actually get what Koi's talking about. Let's it's talk answer, more about meditation and philosophical thoughts. <laughs> if the answer you're looking for will manifest as a ripple, it's better if the pond is still than tumultuous. If you want to find something in a chaotic brain, it's better to still the brain before you search for the answer. So exactly. You need to cause waves. Sometimes you need a still pond. And See, it depends on where he is in the game. We're not just quirky. We're deep as hell, man. <laughs> Lebowski. Yeah, we're so deep. Get the down with the dude is how we hang here at the Quirky Marks. You never know where it's going to go. You never know where it's going to go, all man. All right, all right, you clowns. Settle down. So anyways, so look. Saul is still out there. Uh, oh, God. You know, do you have preferences in terms of who you want to face next? You know, now that you've got your feet wet. I uh, I have I uh, haven't been watching as if much he as could I play should. Like, <laughs> you choose for me. <laughs> if you could play like um, a me or a uh, um. unconscious Lon Harris, perhaps a <laughs> inanimate object of some kind, uh, John, uh, it'd be fun to see John and Greg go at each other. Uh, uh, Amaru, uh, I mean, he's not not spectacular. I'm I'm saying I wouldn't mind if sure any of those names are terrifying and exciting. Um, Greg's ready. I'm just trying to, maybe I can verse myself. Is there a way to do that? I think we have the technology in the digital. <laughs> I feel like you did that today, to be honest. <laughs> That's so. a really good point. I feel like Greg v. Greg was a big part of the first two rounds. I can see the chat, Christian saying a rap. I don't think so. Let's keep uh, this I going. Think, <laughs> I think Amaru is a fantastic player. I gotta player. go, Christian. I think Saul is a fantastic player. Shut up. I think he's <laughs> getting great at all Just of Just let him keep going. The oh pond, my God. The stillness of Greg's mind is what we're gonna summon whoever we play against. I'll end it with this. I just, I, one day I hope to break out of Humphrey's shadow. Ever since he did that free for all, I've never broken out of a shadow. We'll it's have just, you peeing on stages before they're ready for us. I peed happen. on stage to try to get out of that shadow. It didn't do anything. Well, so this I time need... we're doing it for real. 
The yeah. tournament's gonna get serious. I'm peeing on no competitors next time. Because peeing on competitors and then meditating. Right it's all Andrew, I'm gonna try to put this in perspective for the uh, folks at home. As Jen knows uh, from her career doing stand-up, that is exactly what it's like being in the green room of any comedy club after the show is over. Now, whether that's conducive to continuing to thrive in the movie trivia showdown remains to be seen. But for today, whatever attitude that Greg had coming into it, whatever mentorship Coy had, look, if thoughts are bad, then I guess avoid them because it gets you wins in the showdown. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think what I'm going to take away from that is is just come into the game and let the questions come to you. That's the only thing that I think it, of all of that madness. I like that Alba let the game come to him. That's the most important thing to do. He did. He, he didn't. He certainly didn't panic. He, he was maybe no. the opposite of panicking, rooting on his competitor half the time. And on the subject of Taylor Robinson, I thought she played fantastic given the hand she was dealt with a very nice round at number one. And then round two, you spin opponent's choice. Maybe there is a miscommunication between her and her manager in quotes. Maybe Jen is going to follow up on that point. But overall, I think Taylor Robinson adjudicated herself very well as someone who belongs in the inner geekdom. Definitely. I think that's the the best point that you make there right at the very end, Mark, is she belongs here. It's been three years since the last time we saw her on the stage. She came out today. She had a great performance. I think, yes, there was a little bit of a miscommunication around two, but honestly, it could have gone either way, right? She, Gucci could have looked like a genius and they could have spun Spinner's Choice or it could have landed on opponents. That's just the nature of the wheel. I thought the most impressive thing was how she navigated through that category and ended up taking it to round three. I mean, you know, if she answers that one more question, then Alba has to answer his five and you heard what Gucci thought about him answering his five so I thought it was a pretty great game all the way across the board yeah if you factor in experience it looks like Taylor has that in boatloads and so hindsight is 2020 unless you eat carrots and it's 2015 let's turn it over to Jen Sturger for an interview with Taylor Robinson and probably her manager Gucci I'm only at one percent I might cut out but I just want to say oh shock. I mean look it was it was uh it didn't go our way I mean I didn't the Batman thing, I mean, I think, I don't know, I think we made the right choice there. Do you think we did or no? I mean, Like I you, said, I think there were other there. things on, on the wheel that we wanted more. And so we just, we went for it, you know, and sometimes that doesn't work right. out. Right. You know, the thing was, in order to beat a guy like Alba, who was very good, um, I, I felt we needed a really strong category. You no, know, yeah. and look at that, that five you got, was, that's a tough five. That is a really, really hard five. Absolutely. I don't think anybody in the league gets that question. You know, maybe Mara, maybe. But uh, listen, that, you played fantastic. Some of those answers uh, navigating through that top, uh, that category was fantastic. Uh, you have nothing to hang your head about. You played really, really, really well. Absolutely. And, and, and uh, proud of you for sure. Taylor, you fought back, you know, you answered some really tough questions, you stuck in there. Um, your game has improved so much in the in the three years that you've been gone. You know, how do you, where do you attribute that game to, oh God, I think we lost him. Um, no, well, shucks. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I came away from the first match I played three years ago, really understanding where my weaknesses were and what I really needed to work on, I think performing the way that I did three years ago was exactly what I needed to be where I am now because it until you get under those lights you don't really know what you're made of you you don't know what you know and what you don't know until you don't know it and um, I really really feel confident about my performance today even though I didn't get the outcome that I wanted because I've proven to myself and I think to everyone else that I've improved a lot since since I competed three years ago Taylor, you not only have improved a lot, you proved you belong here. And I hope that you prove that to yourself today more than anybody else. Um, that said, there's a lot of people out here. Inner Geekdom is becoming a bigger and bigger division. And um, look, guy's not wrong. Who do you want next? Oh, man, there, there's quite a quite a few people to choose from now, just with how much the division is growing. But I, I do think it would be nice to get some some quirky marks to revenge, maybe get someone like a Jesse Swift. You know what, girl? I think we might be able to work something out for you. Okay. We might be I'm able not. to work something out. So I hope you take away just the improvement that you brought to this match. You don't let the L stick with you too long and you get right back into it, all right? Thanks, Jen. 
And that's the trusty bedside manner of Jen Sturger. But more importantly, you see Taylor Robinson. She may not be as loud and as boisterous or as loopy as her competitor was today, but Andrew, she seems focused and determined and ready to compete again. I have a feeling if we had another competitor ready to go, she'd play them. She just seems like she eats, breathes, and sleeps this stuff. Well, I think what's the, the, the greatest thing about this league is, Mark, is that there's a lot of people that come in and they just, or let's say, there's a few people that come in and just go on a run. They, they're undefeated, they win a belt, oh my gosh, right? The rest of us in the league, we come with wins and they come with losses. And a big part of playing this game and staying in this game and honestly being the best at this game is learning how to lose. You have to learn how to lose at this game or it will eat you alive. And Taylor now, yes, she's lost twice, but she had a really, really great performance in this match. And the first one was a fatal five way. I think we're gonna see a lot of her moving forward. I, I really do. And I, and I really love what we saw from both of them today. That's right. A nice welcome to season eight for both of these competitors in the world of inner geekdom. And for Greg Alba, he gets the win. Taylor Robinson winning a lot of hearts. And both of them seem to have a bright future in the movie trivia showdown, as does. And I never thought I'd say this. Andrew Guy is an announcer. Another hey. job well done, sir. How do you feel the matriculation of announcer has been for you? He's got a pretty quick learning curve there. I hate to admit it. Well, you know, I think it was a lot of the training that you and I did together. You know, now that my back is feeling a little better, now that my voice has come back from all that working out that we did at the park, I'll be honest, man, I felt like you uh, you did me well. And I will say that was one of the better protein bars I've ever had. The chocolate chip cookie dough flavor from Quest. We'll work on getting them as a sponsor. So for Andrew Guy, Taylor Robinson, Greg Alba, Koi Jandrew, sometimes Tom Dagnino, and the great Jen Sturger. For Christian Harloff, I am Mark Ellis and our entire Skybound team. We thank you for watching this episode of the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Check out our Movie Trivia Schmodown Patreon and select which tier is right for you. If you do that $10 a month tier, you get free pay-per-view matches all season long. Thank you all for joining us here today, and we will see you soon for another edition of the Movie Trivia Schmodown.